Botany students and welcome back to another lecture presentation by Mr. Miller. Um, hope everybody is doing well out there, virtual students or any students absent or watching this video. Um, so I just want to quick show you on the calendar a couple of things coming up. Um, so though this week is not real planned out, our unit test is going to be on Thursday, uh, October 8th and October 9th, depending on cohort, and we'll figure out logistics with our virtual folks. Um, you're going to want to go ahead and be filling out this, not this, this is going to be our study guide that goes along with that test, and I'll talk more about that in a future post, but you're going to want to go ahead and make sure you fill out these, these uh, notes to go along with this presentation. So today is going to be a shorter one, shorter presentation on monocots versus dicots. And uh, yeah, so that's going to be important because as you'll see on this study guide, um, class notes are going to be a big part of it. And I'll have some questions kind of getting you ready for that test as we get closer to it. But for today, let's go ahead and jump in talk about the cotyledon. So the cotyledon, also known as cotyledon, you might hear it pronounced cotyledon is, I believe, the correct pronunciation. Um, so essentially, this is a way that we can group angiosperms or flowering plants, which we learned about as being the last group, the most recently evolved group in our plant evolution lecture. So we can categorize flowering plants into two categories based on how many cotyledons they have. So a cotyledon is a baby or embryonic seed leaf. So you will see here they are the first leaves to develop in a growing seed. After the seed germinates or breaks open and sprouts, it will then grow up towards light. Um, the first embryonic or seed leaves, the first baby seed leaves that it grows are called the cotyledons. First leaf to grow, um, monocots have one cotyledon. So for example, right here, this would be a monocot and we'll talk about examples of each. And then dicots have two cotyledons. So examples, all of our grains, so corn, wheat, rice are going to be monocots, whereas legumes, so in kind of the bean and pea family um, are going to be dicots, as well as tomatoes, which are going to be an important plant that we're going to talk about going forward, an important crop. We are going to actually be growing tomatoes um, starting during the latter part of this week. So virtual students, stay tuned for demonstration videos and potentially data that I would send out to you so you could follow along with this lab and potentially graph it as well. All right, so let's talk monocot characteristics. So we can also, besides dividing them into monocots and dicots, um, based on how many cotyledons they have, uh, we can also describe other unique characteristics that these different groups have. So here we have a banana leaf. And monocots, we're going to find, have parallel veins. So veins are a vascular structure that allows water to get into the leaves from the roots and the vein also allows sugars to exit the leaf and head towards the roots. And it, it essentially is a part of that xylem, that water transport and phloem, sugar transport uh, network that will permeate or uh, make up a plant. So in a monocot, the vascular bundles, which are essentially where their vascular tissue is located, is going to be scattered around and it's spread randomly throughout the stem. If you were to take like a cut or a cross section, you would see there's more of a random distribution of the vascular bundles. And we would find if we zoomed in that our phloem or our sugar, sugars are on the outside of our xylem, which is on the inside of that vascular bundle. All a vascular bundle is, is, a, is a section of vascular tissue um, that travels up and down a plant we're also going to find that monocots have a fibrous root system. So what does that mean? A fibrous root system does not penetrate as deeply into the soil. However, the roots spread out more horizontally. Um, so essentially, this is important because it determines how big the plant can grow. Let's see if I can get myself over here. That'll be fine. 
So essentially, a fibrous root system cannot support as much weight as we're going to find a tap root system can. It can't uh, dig as deeply into the soil, um, so it can't support a massive, say, oak tree. So an oak tree, which is an angiosperm, is not a monocot. And the last characteristic is going to be how the floral parts are, um, you would say, numbered perhaps, or what factors of what they have. Um, so this will make more sense to you in a second. So floral parts are going to occur in multiples of three in a monocot. So for example, a flower would never have like five petals. It would have perhaps three petals or six petals or nine petals. So they're always going to be multiples of three. That um, And that is a characteristic of monocots. You would not see that same characteristic with our dicots, which we'll talk about on our next slide. All right, I am in the middle of a tree stump, so let's get me out of there. That was kind of cool, but weird. It was like a talking tree. Um, right, dicots have net-like veins. So instead of having that parallel veination, these are more of a network. Now, this is a red oak leaf, so an oak tree, as I mentioned, is not a monocot, so it's a dicot. This net-like veination allows them to get a lot get a lot of water um, to a lot of parts of the leaf, um, and it allows more pathways to kind of transport water into these larger um, plants, because usually dicots are larger plants. So in terms of where the vascular bundles are, um, the vascular bundles or the vascular tissue of the plant, the xylem and the phloem, are located on the outside ring, the outside perimeter of our stem. If we were to just slice right, slice right through a stem, we would see that. Examples, an oak tree stump. So all this kind of sapwood and heartwood, this really dark kind of uh, caramel colored stuff, brown colored, is going to be our xylem. Then this definitive dark brown border um, separates our xylem from our phloem. So xylem on the inside, phloem on the outside. So there is a definitive border and all of the stuff on the outside of it would be the phloem. So this is showing you how there would be a definitive ring upon which the vascular bundles are distributed and it would be the vascular tissue would be on the outside of that dark brown ring. Also, dicots have a taproot system. So a taproot is a root that is essentially has a very hard root cap that can penetrate and dig really deep into the soil and it allows um, essentially the roots to anchor a larger plant and it allows the roots unlike a fibrous root system, to get at really deep reservoirs of water and minerals. So they, they dig more so vertically, as you see with this long, kind of deeper branching structure, whereas fibrous roots dig more kind of horizontally and spread out because they don't have the strength, they don't have that root cap to dig real deep. Uh, the taproot system can support a large and a heavy plant, so like an oak tree is definitely going to be a dicot because it has a taproot system. And lastly, the floral parts of the plant are, instead of being in multiples of three, like we would see with a monocot, um, they're in multiples of four or five. So for example, right here, you see a flower that has five petals. Um, it could also have four, it could have eight, it could have 10, it could have 12, but it would not have, say, three or six. And that's just, I'm not going to get into the physiology of why that is. I don't honestly know why that is, but that is just a characteristic of die cuts as well. So here's a short comparison video. I can post this with the video. Essentially, I just typed in monocots versus die cuts, and it's like a two minute video. So feel free to watch it. And um, yeah, so lastly, what I want you to do, I thought I had a slide on this, but uh, lastly, for those of you out there watching this, I would like you to go ahead and fill in this table on that guided notes. So let me zoom in a little bit if I can. All right. So I'd like you to fill out this table uh, describing essentially the differences between our monocots and our dicots. And you might need to click on the diagram and say, okay, a monocot, perhaps what do we know about the seed? Um, one one cotyledon, for example, and you would just type these into the boxes. And th these are going to be great notes for you 
uh, in preparing for that test. We're not going to have another quiz, but rather we're just going to have a test that will not only cover the quiz content, but any newer content as well. So you'll fill it in right there. It'll appear there. I'll go ahead and delete that so you'll have a nice blank copy. So that is what I would like you to do kind of for the interactive, interactive activity. Um, you don't have to uh, submit this or turn it in this time. There will be a short Google form on Monocots Die Cots, which is going to look like this. Let's go and find it real quick. It's under note checks. All right, Monocot Die Cot. It's going to be three questions, as you'll see here. One, two, three. Real quick. So complete that. And if we look at our calendar, you're going to go ahead and make sure you've watched this video, fill out the guided notes, then complete that Google form. And there will be a tomato seed pre-lab, which I'll talk about. I do want you virtual folks to also complete that because it'll be, although you aren't actively planting the tomatoes, we're going to have you follow along from home to learn about that process. All right, everybody, that is your Monocot Die Cow Lecture. Have a great day. Bye.